This week, three sides of the coin. The word on the street is Mark has issues because he's such a big collector. <laughs> yeah. We dig into this and we basically say the issues are the people who have issues with Mark. Mark's got no issues. No. We talk but about we talk all about collecting this week. Boner jams. All about collecting. Jams. Tommy's panty drawer. Yeah. Tommy's panty drawer. <laughs> that counts. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Visit threesidesofthecoin.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your support. Hey, Three Sides of the Coin. Got Mike, Tommy, Mark. We're back this week. Nothing happened last week. These other three knuckleheads didn't want to record. And I was I was in moving hell. Thank you to Comcast Xfinity, who has the absolute worst effing customer support in the goddamn world. The, so they're like the go. Kiss Online. Um, they are worse for... than the Kiss Online store. <laughs> they are worse. Short, short, short version for all of our listeners out there. I prepared for this move like a month in advance. Like, all right, change of address forms in, uh, opening up service for water up here and garbage pickup and telling the, the electric company that we're moving. All that fun shit you got to do when you move. Well, one of them was I called Comcast and I said, Keep in mind, I've been with Comcast since 1998. I called them and I said, hey, I'm moving from this location to this location. I want the last date of service at the old location to be here. I want the first date of service to be here. I want exactly the same service. I don't want to change anything, even though they they freaking tried to upsell me. Oh, you know, you could do your mobile phone with us. Hey, we see you don't have TV service. Would you like... I'm like, no, I don't want anything other than the same internet service I have now. Because the internet service is great. It is. And they're like, no problem, no problem. We'll take care of all that. It's all done. It's it's entered. And by the way, your monthly internet bill is going to drop from $150 to $90 a month because we've got a two-year promotion that you can now take advantage of because you're moving. I'm like, oh, cool. Save money on this whole thing. Uh, got the exact same service. And I and I literally said, I don't need help installing anything because I know how to plug in a cable modem. I'm not Mark. Um, I said, I just said, when I walk into the new place, just confirm for me, I should just be able to plug in my existing modem from you guys and it'll work. Yep, 100%. I arrive at the new place last week on a Tuesday, plug it in. Guess what? It works. Everything was fine. Everything was fine. And that made me happy because, you know, when you got a nine-year-old kid, the a move is the most exciting thing in a nine-year-old's mind. I mean, joking people. Got it. I had to get the internet up and running so Tuli could have her iPad connected and go play video games upstairs while we moved all the boxes in. Great. Everything's working. I'm happy as could be. The absolute next day, 24 hours later, out of the blue, all internet service stopped. And I couldn't get it working on my own. I couldn't restarted the router, did everything I knew how to do. So, so he I called, called me them. and I, yeah, I called, I called Mark everything. and Mark said, uh, smoke signals. That's the only thing I understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was just thinking of something when you're telling this story. Do you think it's possible that because you said yes to that promotion, they canceled it to make that work for you? I, uh, who knows? I mean, maybe, but, but so what happened is 24 hours later, internet service stopped. I had to, I had to figure out how to get somebody on the phone. Cause first of all, it's an absolute near impossibility to get somebody on the phone from Comcast. You know, their, their, their voicemail phone prompts just don't allow you to get to somebody. So it took me about 30 minutes to get somebody onto the phone. And I got them on the phone and they're like, oh yeah, 
Um, it looks like we inadvertently canceled your account with us today. That's why you don't have internet. I'm like, okay, not good, but how can we fix this? Oh, we'll just get you set up with a brand new account from our internet sales team, and we'll get you all back up and running. Same, same service, same price, everything. I'm like, okay, it took, I don't know, hour and a half, two hours. Finally got it all back up and running. They canceled my account, opened up a brand new account after all these years, brand new account. Well, then I've always had for the last three years, I've actually had two. And I know some of the tech tech people out there are going to go, it's not possible. Listen to me before you open up your phone your mouth and tell me it's not possible. I've had two cable modems on my single home internet service plan. One downstairs providing Wi-Fi, one in my office providing me a direct ethernet wired connection so we can do all of this and get the best bandwidth possible. And I call them today or yesterday and I'm like, okay, I need to get my second modem up and running now. All the other problems have been fixed that you screwed up. I need to get this done. Oh, we're sorry, sir. It's not possible to put two modems on one home account. I, I go, yeah, it is. I've had it for three years and it was working one week ago before the move. I know it's possible. I actually called Comcast three years ago, talked to a support rep, and they took care of it and got me set up and running. Nope, not possible. Impossible to do. We do not permit that. They transfer you to somebody else. That person goes, oh, we can do that if you want to buy your home phone service through us. We'll give you a second account. Like, I don't want your home phone service. You've already fucked up my internet service. Why would I give you another piece of service to fuck up? They transfer me to a third person. He tried for about an hour and a half. Couldn't make it work. Just said, it's just not possible. I'm sorry. I don't know. But you could move your modem from downstairs up to your office and then run an ethernet cable from it. Okay, that's, that will work. I don't know what the strength of the Wi-Fi signal will be downstairs, but maybe I have to get a Wi-Fi extender downstairs. But he goes, it's gonna cost you $70 to move your cable modem from the living room to your office upstairs. That's like, whoa, back up, reverse. It's going to cost $70 for me to unplug something, walk it up the steps and plug it in. He goes, yeah, because all the coax outlets in your house are not live and active. We only turn on one live active coax outlet per residential account. So that was the one downstairs in the living room. If you want it moved upstairs, we got to send out a tech to your house he will turn on the one upstairs and he's going to turn off the one downstairs and then there'll be a service fee for him to do that i go i was just like you guys are fucking ridiculous just fucking what what an absolute joke this entire house is wired with coax outlets and i go you're telling me i can't use whichever one i want I have to pay you to turn on a fucking outlet. Yep. I go, what a fucking scam. So that's what I've been dealing with. I still haven't got my second modem plugged in. I've got a tech guy coming out here tomorrow to walk my cable modem up the steps and plug it in and turn on a, co uh, a coax outlet so I can get that working in my home office here. But Comcast, you have the worst absolute customer support and service in the world, and you don't take responsibility for all the shit you fucked up, because I did nothing here. See, and all Mark does is he just goes to the pet store, gets himself a hamster, puts it in the wheel when the other one's tired, and he's up and rolling. He just, he just calls his buddy Rob Halford and says, Rob, I need a new router. <laughs> Yep. Yep. Are we done with this talk now? Yep. So, so that's why that's what happened last week and this week. So, 
Well, I'm I in my home office. I'm in the new place. I'm running Scott off Taylor, the Wi-Fi right now. Yeah. No, Petaluma, California, but <laughs> it's much hotter here. Much fucking hotter here than it was in Sausalito. Hold on, Mike. Like, it's how hot is it? It's hotter than oh, hell. hell. <laughs> it's hot, hot, hotter than hell. And in all fairness, the, I think it's that we should tell the people. So what happened for Mark and I is Mark calls me up on Tuesday morning. He's like, hey, man, are we taping today? I'm like, Mike said we didn't have to. He's like, well, then why would we? I'm like, I don't know. Talk to you next week. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I love these guys. This is, I, I mean, seriously, I la- when we last it's recorded. It's like your teacher I t- giving you a hall pass and says you don't have to come back. after. Yeah, you the here's your hall pass. And, straight and home. you know. This homework doesn't count towards your grade. So you're sort of like, so do I need to do the homework? Well, it's not counting towards your grade. So I was in Glacier. In all fairness, too, I was in Glacier National Park. I couldn't get service. So I was on my bike having a ball. (laughs) I was just like, yeah, you you guys are welcome to record next week. It's all on you. I don't give a crap what you do one way or another. But you're going to have to get Lisa on so she can do it. Ooh. Who? Who? I was she? thinking that. I haven't heard from yeah. Lisa in weeks. All, all kidding. Ooh. I did see the their vacationing. So, Le- Lisa, if you happen to be watching, <laughs> say hi to us. Why would she watch? Yeah, I don't. I don't watch. <laughs> I don't either. Why would I? <laughs> I lived it already. I don't have to watch it. E- exactly. What do I got to? I see an instant replay of what I just did to piss people off. Oh, so, <laughs> little Vinnie Vincent, instant replay. Sorry, I'm just had. Um. So yeah, there you go. That's that's been my freaking living hell. Other than that, the move went as good as could be expected. But good God, I have such respect and admiration for movers. We had five people loading the truck and unloading the truck last week. The fucking work those guys do. It, it, I, I, I couldn't do it. I was fucking tired sitting there directing them and telling them what boxes go where. Um, that that kind of labor, I have huge respect for anybody who does that. Mad respect. Mad, seriously, mad respect. I mean, I couldn't have done this move on my own. It'd still be fucking filling up vans and driving and unloading Look, shit. you know, what, what it, I was thinking of when you started talking about that. I remember when I got married. And uh, for my, my, my first and only move um, when I, cause I lived with my folks until Liz and I bought our first house and I'll never forget. I had like more kiss stuff than clothes. I had like more kiss stuff and records than like, that was like, I used my pickup to move and it was all my music. And I'm not talking about my drum set or anything like that, but I mean, you know, it was all fucking posters and records yep. and kiss stuff and and i'm like <laughs> i was like i remember even thinking at the time i'm like i'm moving i'm like what am i fucking 12 <laughs> i know like, like, I, I, I i i'm feeling the same way now because <laughs> as they unloaded the truck it was like 12 boxes of records and 10 boxes of kiss stuff and boxes of rolled up posters and cassette tapes and and i'm looking at this going my fucking kid i mean what am i doing with all this shit i mean we've got a two-car garage and half the garage is still filled with boxes and most of those boxes are kiss shit it's just like i what my why am i still hauling this and most of that kiss shit is in the same boxes they were in when i moved back in 2010 well, I'm, I'm happy to report it. I, and I've, t- I've said it a few times uh, over the last year or so, and it's taken me forever. Um, you know, last summer I had my, uh, I had waterproofing done on my basement. And again, I never had a flood or anything like that. I just had some trickles coming in. I figure I might as well get it fixed. And anybody who's ever went through that knows how, you know, expensive, number one, and time consuming. As you can see from behind me, all those walls last May, meaning May of 2022, 20, uh, those were all removed. They had to they get to the whole thing. And But now I'm really starting to, 
get uh, about 90 plus percent having everything um, back where I want. And again, this isn't even the kiss room. This is the outside the kiss room. So, um, but getting things back where I wanted them. And it's weird for a collector. I'm one of those guys that likes to display my stuff. Don't get me wrong. I've got lots of stuff boxed up, especially my magazines and stuff. But I try and get my posters. And then what I do is I, every now and then I, you know, like a good curator or a curator, whatever that word is, to, uh, to um, you know, change the images or put different posters up. And, you know, it's just fun. It, and, and that gets me to something I wanted to talk about today. And we don't normally talk about things people say online or whatever, but um, there was a, there was a, a post I just thought it was funny because I kept getting it. Um, and it's something I even reached out to Julian about and I started laughing. But to make a, and this is just something to talk about today. Um, somebody posted a thread or something on, on Julian's site about, you know, kiss collecting and, you know, being a big fan and, you know, it, you know the consequences of that sometimes it's is it mental illness Are, do you, do do huge collectors have mental issues basically and and i literally because i kept hey they're mentioning you and uh, the whole thread wasn't about me but it it started off i think i was the first name mentioned and and as i've said on this show many times do i have a very big kiss collection and all that sort of thing yeah i mean i'm and I know a lot of the big time collectors because they're all friends of mine and we're all goofy in it together. And, but you know, like I always like to joke around, I don't even have the biggest kiss collection in Detroit, let alone, <laughs> let alone in the world. And, and I'm always like, it always kind of makes me uncomfortable anyway. I'm like, who cares? I mean, it, I, I've never felt it was a scoreboard sort of thing. I have this, I have this costume, I have that. Who the fuck cares? And, and, and it was nice that there was a few of you guys out there in three sides land that who are sane, but go on that site. And some of you, you made some great points. You're like, I was happy that somebody stood up for not just me, but for the show. They're like, geez, I've heard Mike, Tommy and Mark say, you don't, you, you don't have to own anything to be the biggest kiss fan or be it. And you're damn right. I just wanted to reiterate that today. It's true. Yeah, just because I got a ball this year, who the fuck cares? I do this because it makes me happy. And 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 that's what I wanted to talk about. And they, they're like, you know, so, so much talk these days about mental illness and all this. Are you fucking kidding me? And and I'm going to tell you right now, some of these huge collectors, I mean, guys who are super tight, good friends of mine. And and I'm, I'm happy and I'm not, you know, it's my, much like Ty Cobb said, I'm not bragging if, if you tell the truth. You know, we're all pretty successful guys. And um, I think it would be a different story if if you didn't have a successful business life or a successful, you know, life in general, you wouldn't be able to, 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 to do all this. And if you were in hock and borrowed money to do that, how, how would that even be fun? That's That's literally how I look at this stuff. I do this because it's a lot of fun and I've been doing it since I was a kid. Collecting kiss stuff to me is, is fun. It puts a smile on my face and I, you know, you never know. No one will ever have any, everything. And on top of that, who'd really want everything? There's, I turn stuff away all the time. I, you know, I joke about the, the Spencer's crap stuff. It doesn't do anything for me, but there's other people who have tons of it and, and God, God bless them. I think it's awesome. If you kiss, if you collect kiss stuff and it puts a smile on your face, or if you collect Star Wars or baseball cards, what? Who the fuck? Look, man, do it for the right reasons. Do it because it puts a you know a warmness in it, your it heart. Ma it and makes smile you happy. On your face. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, my my attitude is first of all, I would feel confident saying every single person collects something. I mean, you may not have rooms dedicated to your collection, but you might have a shelf for something. I mean, 
I remember as a kid, as a teenager, I collected beer cans. Remember when beer can collecting oh, was, was all deal. the craze? Yep. I had a thousand beer cans. I'd go to shows and buy cans and trade cans. And, you know, everybody collects something. I mean, you just, whatever makes you happy, as you said, Mark, you want more of it. It's because it's a, it's a childhood memory or, or it's something poor, but you know, it might be, oh, well, I've got, I've got, I don't know, five, I've got 50 different fishing reels. I collect fishing reels, not me personally, but somebody else might do that. Or I've got all these different baseball gloves, or I've got different bowling balls. I don't care. Everybody collects something. And there's literally nothing mental about collecting. I would make, what, what, that what's wrong what I, with it? I would make the argument for somebody you know, like I said, you know, I'm a business owner and, and, uh, you know, I've got lots of hobbies. I play in a few bands. I'm a, I'm a busy guy, but I kiss collecting really makes me stop and like pay attention and, and have Good fun. Good for you. Yeah. And, and I was telling the guys and I, and I don't, you know, I don't go, I actually just purchased some, a, some high end things and sorry, I cannot go in to talk about it. I just pictured some, I, you know, just bought some high-end things. I also just bought some posters that I I wasn't even aware of um, that existed. And I'm, as somebody like myself who's very into this, that's hard, man. It's hard to find. But that's that made, that makes I, you happy because it's that thrill of finding something you yes, don't have that yeah. maybe you've been looking for for decades. And I, and again, this was you know this was from a, a you know another big collector who's a friend of mine and you know that's the sort of things we do we're like hey did you know did you check this or i heard a rumor that this this might be for sale or that's what makes this fun and again i i I literally laughed out loud when i'm when i read like oh you know it's a mental and 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 that's how i want to talk a little bit about that today i'm like man if, if if kiss collecting does does anything other than make you happy you should stop you're doing yeah, because the wrong if thing. it's yeah yeah because if, if it's making you broke you shouldn't do it it's making you like edgy and anxious if, and, if, if it's you destroying have, your marriage yeah, because oh somebody God, else doesn't yeah. like it yeah I, and again, I, I, I would almost my, say my, mark I, I, I just want to say this if you just wanted to collect kiss because it makes you happy and you don't that's the great thing about the, the Spencer stuff and a lot of the newer stuff a lot of it's just five and ten dollar stuff. But you can sure, fill yeah. your shelf up and it looks cool and it displays great. Uh, and again, I, I support you. I think that's awesome. So you don't need a ton of money to do this. You know what I mean? I think that's where you could say somebody would have a mental illness if they, if they don't have a ton of money to spend in there. I, I would argue death. that point. I think that's wrong. That's very aggressive. I don't, I think people throw that term mental illness around too much. And even if you don't have any money and you're still going in debt and you're buying stuff, I still don't think it's a mental illness. I, I really don't. I mean, if it brings you joy, it, it, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's too easy to tell someone you have mental illness because you're in an activity or you're collecting or whatever, and you're doing something that that particular person doesn't understand it wouldn't do but it doesn't mean that that you are somehow less than mentally stable because it's something that you enjoy i would well, argue but- i would argue that people that are on the internet tearing other people down is much more of a possibility of having mental illness than somebody well, who's doing something so uh, that's what i was going to say it the to me i would really look at the person the people out there who are obsessed with other people and what they're collecting that's where there's a problem when you when you're when when you're sitting behind your computer and and this doesn't this isn't about mark or kiss whether you're obsessed about anybody who goes to every, tries to go and travel to every baseball stadium to play, see every a baseball game in every stadium and goes, that's ridiculous. That's crazy. No, you're crazy because you're obsessed with what that person's doing because they're doing something that they want to do and is happy. 
You're obsessed with Mark because Mark collects stuff. You're obsessed with somebody else because they collect something because, I mean, it goes, it takes me back to um, Gene Simmons vault. All the people who blew up, like you're a nut job for spending, not you, Mark, but every person who's bought a Gene Simmons vault, you spent thousands of dollars on that piece of crap. Why do you care? (laughs) What do you care that thousands of other people spent their money on to make themselves happy. I, I would say really you've care. got the you've got the issue that you're sitting here worrying about and obsessing over what other people do with their money and do with their lives to make themselves happy. I don't think don't worry care. about it. Don't worry about what Mark does, what I do, what Tommy does, what anybody else does. What we do to be happy is of no consequence to you. Zero. Mike, that that's exactly, you know, the, the point I was trying to make is it's funny because my 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 son is he's a huge, huge hockey fan. And that's one of the things that him and his soon to be wife want to do, because she's a huge hockey fan, too. So they, they want to hit all the eventually. This isn't something you do. All, but all the they want to go to. Every, yes, they want to go yep. to every. And it's funny when I've been fortunate enough to, to be you know, backstage at, at some of the kiss shows and stuff. Like when we were in Tampa, I took a bunch of pictures of the backstage there. When, when I was with Tommy, remember that I was taking pictures of the Minnesota wild stuff. I'm like, yep. you know, because just so he could see, like, this is what their dressing room looks like. I and mean, it wasn't the kiss one. I, it was funny. I was back there doing, you know, fun stuff with Tommy and I, but I, you know, as soon as I walked by the hockey backstage doors i'm like oh shit my kid would love this just to see what jock straps nice so he's looking to you know looking for stuff like that but you know hopefully when they go to buffalo they'll sit in front of the chirping kids oh that was awesome wasn't it yeah but no (laughs) and i just my nephew wants to stand in the highest point in every state they hike great go for it do it awesome i mean you know people have things they want to do that 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 drives them in life outside of their job mm-hmm. because most people their job is not something they love to do and look forward to doing so when they're away from their job they want to go do something that's completely fun and enjoyable mm-hmm. great but, if that but, if that's traveling if that's sports if that's collecting if that's some weird my dad used to collect matchbook covers I mean, yep. he'd get yep. a matchbook cover from every hotel, gas station, restaurant, wherever he went. He had walls covered in matchbook covers. My, but it, that's what I all, you know, because I we we joke about this, but this is or at least I do all the time. That's why I have the maybe I thumb my nose a little bit at social media because too many, in my opinion, I think there are too many people who are just so hung up on what other people are doing. Yeah. I, I, like mm-hmm. I've, I've, I, I have Facebook and that's it. I don't, I don't even have an interest in anything else. I see enough, you know, loony bin stuff on Facebook that, that to last a lifetime. I don't need to go to, you know, Twitter or whatever that new one is and uh, threads, I think threads and Instagram and whatever else. And, you're going to, you two, especially Michael, more so than anybody. I don't even like understand the concepts of Reddits and shit. I, who the fuck has that kind of time? I, you, I don't, you don't that's need what I mean. If it, if, it does, if it doesn't interest you, who cares? Why yeah, would well, a single that, person that's the thing care? About, that's the thing about collecting Kiss that's fun, though, for me. And this is where I have a disconnect, like with social media. Collecting Kiss stuff is fun. And it's, I can hold it and it's functional. You know what I mean? I, that in posters and that stuff, just, I, I just get into it. I, I couldn't imagine. I love that you on, collect it. Cause I that? know where to, I said, I love that you collect it. Cause now I know where to go when I want to look at stuff. <laughs> but I, I no, I'm serious. It. Yeah. And I, you're a musical that. archivist in a way, just like this, this podcast is, I just, I just really I'm really uh, agitated when people use the term mental illness because there are people who truly are suffering. That's that's, from, that's, that's fair enough. I get I get yeah. what you're saying, Tommy. I I I 
maybe mental illness. Well, first of all, mental illness, I think, was the word they used in this. You didn't bring it up. You didn't bring it up. They did. No, no. But but I, I do think there's first of all, there's no issues with people collecting. I, again, think the issue is when somebody is obsessing and and focused on other people and what they're doing to collect and make themselves happy. It's like it, it, it unless it impacts your life, why do you care? I mean, that's one of the things I've learned over the last few decades is like if something doesn't directly impact my life. It's not worth my energy. It's not worth even thinking about Mm -hmm. because it has no bearing on what I do. So if Mark wants to go spend all of his, all of his money on one collectible item, great. I don't care if that's what he wants to do. It has nothing to do with my life. How's it any, any, any crazier than somebody who will spend $78 million on a painting that's literally an orange sphere? That's literally all it is. It's $78 yep. million. Dollars. Well, that was something that I, I found in the thread. And again, you know, I'm just talking about it because it's, you know, it's something to talk about today. But I, I thought it's funny because, and you guys know me well. I mean, I've known you guys for, you know, a long time. How many times you hear me talk about money with Kiss stuff? None. Never. You're, 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 you are not a bragging collector. You're not interested in bragging and 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 showing up everybody else. It's, it's I, all I, for I, you personally. Yeah, well, it's funny because on my Facebook um, recently, I was matter of fact, Tommy's the one who got me the poster. It's a very big poster, and I finally found a place to put it i was all excited but it was a sob to to frame i was shocked that i saw that you were going to frame that i know and that's the whole thing i i i I grabbed it and sent it to you just to fuck with you i i crank the stereo to i mean literally it shakes the walls and i sit down here and i get my bags and boards and my paper and my play you know everything to, to, to do my framing and, and no one bothers me. Liz just stays up and does her thing. I just come down here and physically do something. And let me tell you, man, it's just a ton of fun. I, I, I don't know what I do without it. And again, See, I, that's the, that's the funny thing, you know, I'm, you know, and I'm just using myself as an example, but I know other people that do this too, but, you know, other than running a business, you know, and and playing hockey and playing in bands and doing things with my family for as much as I love collecting kiss, it's still only this much of this much. Right. You know what I mean? I I stay busy with other things. That's how come I don't obsess about kiss stuff. I've, I've had friends, damn, damn good friends who we've bid on stuff and I'll call them and congratulate them because I'm very happy that it went to, you know, we've, I've been outbid tons of times, but I've never once ever felt the ping of jealousy or resentment. No, man, you look, it was open bid. You won. Cool. You know, and it's funny. I've been able to get some things and I'll send them pictures and they're like, Oh, motherfucker, where'd you get that? You know? And, and, you know, and I can't wait. It's funny for a couple of the posters I just got. Um, I'm going to send them to a couple of friends going, dude, I didn't even know these fucking existed. And I know they're going to do the same thing. And, and that's, look what I'm doing. Smile. I can't and wait. I, and I, say, happy. Well, and I, I mean, want to say, yeah. I sent you that poster because I saw it. I'm like, you know what? This is going to bug him. Because if I send this to him, he's going to want to hang it, but he's going to want to frame it. And there's no freaking way he's going to frame a four foot by 12 and foot poster. Figured it and, I, out. and he fucking did it. I'm like, where the hell's he putting but, it? But you Not know, easy, Tom, Tommy, that 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 in itself. So you got Mark was happy getting that poster. Then Mark yeah. was even happier figuring out how to frame that poster. Mm-hmm. That that, oh, that was people don't get. It's too. like it's it's like it's it's a sense of completion. It's it's a great feeling. I we talked about this in me, not many episodes, but a long time ago. Where, at least for me, part of the the thrill of kiss collecting has been the hunt. 
because it's yeah. all too easy to just jump on eBay, find it, buy it, and it's yours. Yeah. I don't want, I've never wanted to do that. Mine I'm is not a big yeah, eBay. There's certain, eBay guy. There's, there's certain items I would love to get, but I'm not going to get them until I walk into that, that antique store, that flea market, that garage sale, and you turn around the corner and go, holy shit, is that what I think it is? And it's only two bucks. That's the thrill that I live for when it Mike, comes to what collecting. I, what I preach all the time is when I find stuff like I just did and, uh, you know, some higher end items, they're not from eBay. How did this all start? No different than how I met you two guys. I got out of my house and I went to events. I, I went. You I met people. You networked. Yes. And that's the joy. Because not only do you find cool stuff, you meet wonderful people. I, you know, I, I said this to once. I, I, I forget, said that I can't remember what Kiss member it was, but I was telling them, I'm like, did you ever realize like the lives you've changed and just your band because fuck all our friends how many friends you got you know from from being a kiss fan tons tons all over the world or people you you talk to and again that's the good part of social media i love the fact that there are people who i was and and adrian's a great example with you guys you were pen friends with and and you've been pen pals yeah decades decades ago 40 years ago and it's funny just just because we, we've been, you know, so much so we've invited some of our old time friends. Alex, on, you know, has, has been on the show. I still talk to Alex about stuff. We'll talk to one another all the time. And I didn't meet him until he traveled from Europe and then I traveled from Detroit. And well, and next I'm thing in, you know, you're friends. And I'm interested in it now, too, because I like finding shit to send him. Because of the yeah. fact that it blows him away when I find something he doesn't have. Yeah. I, that's you know, on occasion. Th- mm-hmm. You know, there's at, what this all comes down to. There is literally nothing wrong with collecting. Absolutely nothing wrong with collecting. And, and you shouldn't feel driven to compete in a collecting environment. Collect what you want. We, you know, Mark, we've always said, you, you know, we don't give a crap about all these kiss action figures, but if that's what you really love, if you've got a, a connection to action figures, go out and buy all buy of them. All. I mean, buy it, what makes way, you happy. Buy them if you still have rent money at the end of the month. And you can feed your family. And yep. You can put clo- you know, you can pay your bills. Your, yeah. As long as you can do that, you're, you're in good shape. You know? if, if, if you, if you want to buy the stupidest little trinkets that nobody else likes, I don't care. I'm not going to buy it. But if that's what you like, because you've got some connection to it, do it and don't. And here's the important thing. If you're online, don't let other fans talk down to you because of what you collect, because of what you're excited about. Do it because it makes you happy and And ignore all the other idiots out there who frankly are probably just jealous that that you are happy and they're not happy and you got something and they can't get what they want and and the final part and you you brought this up early on mark the size of your collection has no bearing on how big of a fan you are the amount of money you've spent on this band the number of shows you've seen the number of records you have means absolutely nothing I, and and I, I remember saying this going all the way back to when I first started working with KISS because, you know, this has always been ongoing. Oh, I've been to 200 shows. I'm a bigger fan than you. And I'm like, no, you're, you're no bigger. I mean, great. You've gone to that many shows, but you're no bigger a fan than, than the kid who just discovered KISS last week. And his sole purpose now is to get to his first KISS show. That person is as big a fan as Mark is. And, and frankly, I could say in some instances, those fans might be more important because they are a new generation and the future that will grow with the band. People like the three of us, we're here. We've been here for decades. We're going to be here until they're completely done, gone, and over. 
it's those brand new fans. When you talk to any band out there, they want to know how do we get new fans? How do we, it's not that they don't appreciate the diehards like us, but a band will not survive and live just on diehards. They've got to keep putting in new blood. And that's young kids. That's the children of the older fans. Everybody is a huge fan. All you got to do is like the band. And I'm saying this in reference to any band that's out there, not just Kiss. If you like the band, you're a fan as big as the guy who owns every variation of every single album from every country around the world. Yeah, there's not, there's not much more to it than that. And, and again, like I said, um, it's, it's something that's fun. Um, being a Kiss fan, is a t- I mean, just in general, it's a lot of fun. It's a great place to be. And it, look, if you look and focus on the negative things, which admittedly sometimes we do on the show, just because it's something to talk about. But, I, you know, at the end of my days, you know, hopefully many years from now, someone asked me about KISS. I would just say, you know, it's a big part of my life. Still, I guarantee at that point, it'll still be a part of my life. It, it made me happy. I met so many great people. And that's really, I think, the most important part of the, you know, the the end of the road tour and the most important part of being a fan. But I'm going to go a step further. You could say that to me, too, about being a sports fan or a fan of Godzilla movies and Universal movies and Marvel and DC comics. So much stuff that, you know, I still enjoy from when I was a kid. It never went out of style and maybe that's what keeps the perpetual smile on my face is everywhere I look I, it was funny yesterday I went for a bike ride and then came home his legs are sore I was tired flip on is, and I always go to this one go-to channel and sure enough they were having a Godzilla marathon I'm like fuck I know where I'm spending the next couple hours man watching uh, watching some Godzilla films and I it was funny, even even Saturday, Liz and I had some stuff going on. We're like, hey, flip on this one channel. Sure enough, man, they're having a Stooges marathon, you know, three Stooges. So I go back to all these things that put a smile on my face and I try to surround my life with them. And uh, it's hard not to be a happy guy when you're surrounded you know, by. We, so we, we've all, we've always we've always said there's nothing wrong with feeling like a 12 year old again. There's, Thank you. There, That's what there, I was there, trying to encompass. There you. is. L- Nothing strange, sick, or odd about wanting to remember that thrill. You know, for me, it's like that thrill of watching the Paul Lind Halloween special. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, you get the goosebumps. It still brings you back, you know. Like, speaking and, of negatives, Mike, remember when people were making fun of us for saying that? I'm like, then yep. you don't get it. You don't, you get, don't it. get it. You don't get it. You don't have anything in your childhood that was good. And, and, and listen. There are people that that's true, and that is a whole different issue and discussion. But when you've got things in your childhood that make you happy, why don't you want to reminisce and go back to those moments and and relive them? I think many people do. I think the bigger problem is, is that there's a lot of people who maybe, you know, like I have a really good friend, Bob. Okay. Bob is never, ever, um, giving me crap about what I'm interested in because he doesn't know anything about music, nor does he care. He loves to fish and snowmobile and all those things. We still remain friends, even though we have absolutely opposite uh, hobbies and interests. But having said that though, they're all pretty much the same because that was his childhood. Whereas mine was music. And I just think that there's just some people who think that they are better than other people because they like baseball or they like fishing or they like downhill skiing or they whatever it is and and they look at collecting music or collecting kiss stuff or that sort of thing is stupid childish behavior and that's where i think part of the rub is some of them just literally don't understand it because they just don't understand it oh no i you're 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 right but i guess my whole point is they don't need to understand it 
Why, no, why they don't. do it's not why 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 do you need to understand why somebody loves what they do? No, and I've taken crap for having this podcast. Oh from god, yeah, yeah, we, we get it all the time. Like, you got you do a podcast about a band? About kiss? <laughs> and you've been you doing it for how many kids? years? Yeah, at oh, your god, age? Yes. People yeah. will roll their eyes all the time. But you know, Mark, we're you know, one of the things that I like about the fact that like we collect and we're interested in Kiss is, and maybe you've noticed this too, but I felt like in the last couple of years, you know, we were coming to an era where it's like, well, is everything we know and want to see and learn about out there? Have we reached the end where everything is there? And no, it's, I think we're, getting to a point now like with kiss where it's like there's stuff that's starting to appear now and not coming from the band mm-hmm. coming from collectors Photos coming from video. coming coming from people who are just like wow i was just cleaning out my 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 dad who recently passed away in his closet look at this kiss stuff i found and you know it's a stack of photos from this long lost show that we all as fans thought never happened and and perfect example is just this week, somewhere on Facebook, somebody posted about a half a dozen more black and white photos from the Great American Music in store that mm-hmm. Tommy and I were at. Mm-hmm. But these were photos taken by the newspaper, the St. Paul Pioneer Press. They and this were press is the same photos. meet and greet in store that. Kyle couldn't get into and yep. Marty couldn't get into. And I just want to make sure that they don't forget that they were outside looking in. Oh yeah. And, and, and these, these photos were yeah of the event I was literally at, but I'd never seen these photos before. Mm-mm. I didn't honest Tommy. I didn't know St. Paul pioneer press was there. St. Paul pioneer press had a blurb in the newspaper about the event. Right. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was like all these decades that happened in 79 people. I just discovered it this week. Like, you know, you found the lost idol or whatever it is. It's just like I feel like in the kiss world, things like that are starting to happen. Things are starting to come up where somebody's like, well, I found this photo. I found this scan. I found an old ticket stub. I -hmm. found an old audio clip. We thought we'd heard it all. No, there's stuff that's still coming up that just makes my eyes go, oh. Every time I drive by REI, I think about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember I I was driving Ace around that day and we drove right past it. I said, that's where the great American music was. I said, do you remember that dynasty in star? And he did. He remembered everything about it, how they were late. And Peter was pissed. He was like going on and on about it. I was surprised. Yeah, just I mean, didn't do that many in stores. That that that's one of the things I love about Kiss because Kiss is such, and you know, and we've said this: we're lucky to be fans of a band that's been around this long and has done this many albums and this many tours, and because we've got so much to take in and enjoy. Imagine if our favorite band had only done two albums. You kind right. of run out of there's there's not a lot out there for a band that's only been around for a couple of years. But then the other thing, too, I just kind of popped into my head. To one of the things that Mark said earlier is, is that this is a small piece of his life where the danger is, is if you are foregoing your relationships, your family, your work, other things that are yep should sh- i shouldn't say should but are important to most people in life that are true connections with friends and family if you're foregoing all of that just to collect something i don't care if it's kiss or whatever and you're almost becoming somewhat of a hermit then then we're talking something that maybe is a little bit much because you're just giving up too much of your life for something that I don't think, I mean, there's nothing that's going to be more important to me than my kids and my family. Well, you know, exactly. my, my experience, though, is different for the most part than both of you. And this isn't good or bad. It's different. 
Liz is much more open to going to kiss events with me more so now, now she goes to all of them. Um, but you know, that wasn't always the case, you know? Um, but I'd always offer it. I'm like, you, you know, I don't expect you to love this the way I do, but you can see how happy it makes me. And do you want to come? I'd like to share it with you. Yes. And you know, at first it was like, no, just go. And then she started going to the expos you know, and then she started meeting some of my friends and now she's got a whole, you know, ton of people in the KISS community that she's friends with, you know, and mm-hmm. she's met all these wonderful people. And well, again, this just brightened our lives and, and both my kids, you know, understand where KISS fits in, into our lives and, you know, they They've been along for the ride and enjoyed it. My, my point is, is what Tommy said. I didn't seal my world off from my wife and my kids with, you know, this is mine. You don't get, you know, fuck no. It was like, You're not allowed in the basement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, the other, just the opposite. Come on, especially with my son, because, you know, my love for Kiss made me love all kinds of music. And now, you know, he learned how to play bass and he learned how to play drums and he loves music and goes to, you know, concerts and, you know, uh, and my daughter, while she loves music, it, you know, she's certainly not, a, a, you know, although she does like some Kiss songs and ACDC and some of that stuff, but, you know, she's more of into the, the pop stuff and, and nothing wrong with it. Heck, I like some of the pop stuff, but, you know, my son went down in the the hard rock vein, heavy metal with me, but that's what, you know, we, we spent a ton of time together. So, but it's again, you know, share your hobbies, share your passions and you never know what's going to ignite. And like I said, while my son isn't a crazy kiss fan, but he's got that, he's like, wow, I want to do this. I want to, you know, I want, he does. He's funny. He's got every hockey Jersey from every team, you know, home and away. And that's just something he likes to do. And I, I just think it's a wonderful thing. And it, I mean, right. again, you know, I could think of worse things. <laughs> well, my, oh, yeah. passion, my passion is photography. Yes. I get just yeah. as excited about taking a really cool photo as Mark does about collecting a couple of these items he just got that he didn't. Or getting the new time. Adam and Eve catalog. <laughs> new Adam and Eve. Well, because, you know, they he makes that. He, what You guys don't know this, but Mark <laughs> collects his, his favorite porn clips throughout the year. And at the end of the year, he makes boner jams and he, he sends them to everybody, which is so Come nice. On. I you have know? family that watches this. Okay. No, that is not true. <laughs> you turds. Liz is going to be like, Mark, I've never seen these boner jams. <laughs> he filmed them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this, this speaking, was, this was speaking a... of jams i you know it, it that's what are we doing is it fuzzy or blurry is it just it, it's, it's, uh, every once in a while it just does that if if there's too much motion in front of the camera it's weird speaking of jams does that make you hungry well i there's i, I will because there's you, toast and yeah. jam bagels and jam no <laughs> liz we are having uh we're having tacos tonight which liz has well this tuesday uh, well, Taco it, Tuesday. It's actually it was like we're I, I will just let everybody know my lovely and beautiful daughter is getting married this weekend coming up. So yeah, I know I want I'm pictures of you walking her down the aisle. I was serious oh, about I, it. Let I me said tell that you last week. Let me tell I am just gonna be a will you wear your three side shirt? No. And I want I also <laughs> want you know what else I want? I want a video of your speech. I'm sure that that'll be well, you know, all kidding aside. Um, my daughter's theme for her wedding is Detroit Rock City. All on her own because we're having everything in the city. <clears throat> the most uh, one of the most beautiful churches and uh, our the church was built in the 1800s. Um, <clears throat> at one of the most beautiful churches downtown We're staying. She's having her wedding at a very prestigious place you know the reception and everything is themed for downtown Detroit and and it's it and it goes back to what I said you know just taking when the kids were little and 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 I'm just going to be blunt here because a lot of people I think unfortunately who live like you know I live in the suburbs 
there's some suburban people who wouldn't go into cities for whatever reason. I was a complete opposite. I, I've worked in the city my entire life and I always brought my kids and my wife and we went to tons of sporting events and, you know, all the restaurants and everything that the city had to offer. And I love the fact that both of my kids love cities the way I do. And, uh, you know, again, when my, when my, when I saw that, when my daughter's wedding uh, or bridal, everything was Detroit rock city. I just kind of smiled to myself. I'm like, Way to go, man. You, that's, that's you, awesome. You did, a, you did a good job there, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, if Cobra right. Hall was still here, she would have gotten married there. What's that? If Cobra Hall still existed, maybe she would have gotten married there. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, I tell you what, our, our her reception isn't far from there. So, um, <clears throat> But like I said, the, the fact that, you know, able to share my passions and, and seeing those little things rub off on them is uh, is pretty freaking cool so like i said you know my my daughter's getting married this weekend my son's getting married uh next march you know it's a pretty busy crazy time and i will tell you much like i just said that's been you know it's been pretty hectic that was one of the nice things when this kiss stuff just came up that i just got like ah cool you know what i mean i kind of take a diversion away from everything that's going on and not that i you know it just it was not just that not, you were looking for a diversion but it was correct, just a nice correct. it was yeah. a nice little smile yeah, yeah yeah i mean you know so again everybody listening don't feel bad about collecting and don't let anybody make you feel bad Amen. about collecting that's what it comes down to nobody nobody's got any right to tell you you're good or bad and you're you have no because obligation of what you collect to to justify it or explain it to anybody. Nope. Yeah, you don't have to explain anything. What all you got to say is it makes me happy. This is the what I like. There you go. And as long as it truly does, you're in good shape, man. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, homework for today. What do you, do you collect? collect? Do you what collect? do you collect? And it and I don't mean what kiss do you collect. Is there something else that you collect that that's more important to you than kiss? What do you collect? What do you focus on? You know, what makes you happy? Um, that's it. Three sides. We'll see everybody next week. We got a guest next week. I think Mark. Yes, we do. We have a very interesting guest that I think you guys are really going to dig because I'm, I'm excited. He saw, he saw kiss with Aerosmith. In Detroit in April of 1974 and and has seen Kiss pretty much most of the time since then. But he was at that show and he's got some literally side splitting funny stories that you've never heard before. Yeah, I'm I I, and I'm excited because he does. Tommy, he does have a connection to Minneapolis. Mm, Excellent. And KQRS. Okay. That'll be interesting. I like that. Yep. Yep. So. yep. Um, so that's it, everybody. Three sides of the coin. We're out of here. We will see everybody next week. If you have something to say, leave a voicemail or send us a text message. Call 320-515. Voices for Three Sides of the Coin. Provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and by JessicaMarsVoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.